hey, I'm going to share a couple of different techniques for using AI tools combined with some motion graphics and compositing techniques inside of Adobe After Effects to create some cool animated idents, logos, or text for your projects. As always, please press like, subscribe, and leave any comments below. Here we go. So the first easiest approach simply needs a still image of our graphic here to start with. I'm then going to use the first of the AI tools, which is on Runway ML. And then once logged in, I'm going to choose Generate Images and use their Image to Image tool. You can then click and upload your image. Then in the Settings tab to the right, you can choose HD if you're on their standard or higher paid tiers. Choose the number of images you want to output. Choose an artistic style. I'm going to go for Cinematic for this first one. Adjust the prompt weight to dictate how much you want your text prompts to affect the overall output. Scroll down and set the strength, which dictates how far away you want to move from the original image. You can then add a negative text prompt, and I'm going for blurry, distorted, ugly, and duplicate. You can then add your main text prompt, and I'm going for logo, underwater, surrounded by glowing jellyfish and bubbles, cinematic, VFX, realism, and I'm going to add core sticks. And press generate. And with a few credits spent, I've now got these cool images where we have our Yikes logo, maintaining that overall composition, plus it's added these jellyfish style images and tweaked the colors and the look of our logo. So really pretty cool. I'm gonna go through and try out some different options. And the next lot of images came out really nicely again, and there's various elements within each that I like. Also, it's worth noting that these images are not saved to your account by default, as far as I can tell. So make sure you tick save to assets for any image that you think you might like now or in the future. I really like this one. So I'm gonna use that in the next step of the video where we're gonna upscale the overall look of the image before bringing it to life. I also produced loads more images. This is a stop motion style with a dystopian cityscape. Um, this is a modern hallway, neon signs, logo on Mars, logo on fire. I really like this one down here. And then a frozen version of the logo in New York. So I've tried out a wide variety of AI tools and I think this is the best image to image one available at the moment, enabling you to maintain that composition. If you wanted to do something similar for free using Stable Diffusion on Comfy UI with your source image and a line art control net, choose your art style with the checkpoint model, add a positive and a negative text prompt, set your settings, seed number, overall resolution, but I appreciate that Comfy UI is not for everyone. But you can run it for free locally on a suitable machine, and I imagine there's a very similar process behind the scenes at Runway ML. I'm now going to hop into Leonardo.ai and use their brand new Universal Upscaler to increase the quality, the details, and the resolution of one of our Runway ML generated images. So I'll click the Universal Upscaler and upload my image. And I'm going for this cool jellyfish shot with our Yikes logo in the middle, and I'm going to choose cinematic as the art style, ramp up that creativity strength. You also have the option to include a text prompt and press upscale. And there are a couple of alternative upscalers now available from the fantastic tool from Magnifique. And you can also achieve some similar things using Comfy UI and a different workflow. But back in Leonardo AI and it's finished upscaling my image and I can scroll this bar across and see the improved image with higher clarity. There's more details in the bubbles. There's a crisper edge to the side of the logo and it's generally just a much better looking image. So really, really cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and download that image. It's worth noting this tool has just come out and it's not as good as that from Magnific, but it is a lot cheaper. Now jumping back to Runway ML and I'm gonna use Gen 2 to bring that still image to life. So with that upscaled image from Leonardo AI added, I'm gonna turn on camera motion and add some zoom forward to three. I can jump into the image description and add a text prompt. And then I'm gonna use the new motion brush where you can paint on areas of the image and dictate what sort of motion you'd like applied to that area. So I'm just gonna paint around some of the jellyfish and give it some horizontal and vertical motion. Repeat the process for bubbles and other jellyfish. And then I'm gonna paint around my logo. And for the logo, I'm just gonna add a very small amount of ambient motion and press done and simply press generate. And we've got that initial generation and it looks pretty cool. Yes, it's got some weird AI things going on, but the overall motion's kind of cool. And yes, unfortunately that logo does fade out. And I think that's probably because it's got that slight watery look to it. I actually decided to run this clip again, but this time with that Yikes logo brighter and white, which I've overlaid using Photoshop, run it back through motion brush and generate it again. And this time with zero camera movement as well. And after a few generations, this is the best of the bunch and the logo is kind of visible throughout. It does warp and wave, which is quite nice. And we can lean into that in the final animation. And one final time, if you did want to create some animation for free rather than using a paid tool like Runway ML, you could make use of Comfy UI and Animated Diff. If you'd like to see some tutorials around using Comfy UI, please let me know in the comments. 
generally steer away from it just because of the level of complexity and back into ROM AML where I've taken four more images, used the motion brush to bring each scene to life. We can then jump all the way back to Adobe After Effects with our Yikes logo, which is a shape layer, which I'll show you how to make a little bit later on in this video. But essentially you can click on the add button, choose stroke, drop down, and you can increase the width of that stroke. You can go up to the fill menu here, click fill and turn off fill, press okay. You can then press add, choose trim paths, drop down the trim paths menu, click the stopwatch for the end value, set a keyframe, move to the beginning of your timeline and change it to zero. And then as you move through the timeline, the outline of your logo is drawn in. And you can play around with the timing, add some tapering and things like that. Then in a separate composition, I've built up a quick edit of those runway ML clips and added that stroke outline moving around the logo before fading out that last clip and bringing in the logo in its entirety. It's a pretty simple edit, but with some nice sound design, it should work quite well. You could then build on this much further using the logo itself as a track matte layer to reveal part of the image and do some cool transitions. Here I've added a CC radial wipe effect to a black solid and I'm using that as a track matte to reveal the backgrounds and just building things up to create something a little bit more interesting. And this brings me to the end of the first part of this video where we use Runway ML's image to image tool to create those different styles of image whilst maintaining the overall composition before bringing it to life using Runway's Gen 2. Next I'm going to show how you can use some other AI tools to build a more elaborate 3D scene inside of Adobe After Effects plus touch on some other more advanced motion graphics techniques and tools. As I'm going to be showing off some intermediate to advanced ideas using Adobe After Effects in this video, having a solid foundation in the software will make things much easier and open up a ton of creative possibilities for you to combine motion graphics with evolving AI tools now and in the future. That's where Skillshare comes in. It's an incredible online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people just like us. Skillshare offers classes across a wide range of topics, including graphic design, animation, 3D software, and yes, Adobe After Effects. You can polish your skills and discover new techniques to bring your animations to life. Their cool learn by doing approach means that after each class, you can create and share a project, which is an excellent way to apply what you've learnt and get feedback from a community of like-minded creatives. I've actually been eyeing a course on Unreal Engine to level up my skills there for future projects, and there's a class on growing a YouTube channel, which, you know, might be handy. Skillshare makes it easy to chart a learning path with their curated class collections, which guide you from beginner to advanced levels at your own pace. And I think this professional techniques one for After Effects looks pretty cool. I'm also very pleased to say that the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can get started today. Many thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like us on our journey to learn and grow. Now I'm going to show a different approach using some other AI tools to animate your iDent, build up a 3D environment using AI, place that inside of After Effects, light it using an AI generated HDR image, and then doing some more traditional motion graphics techniques, some compositing using track mats and things like that to build up a more developed scene. Here we go. To start off, I made this completely imaginary sports brand with this dynamic tick. And to do that, I hopped into Adobe Illustrator and drew out that tick shape, added some text, used the shear tool, used the expand tool to turn the text into shape layers. And I'm using the super handy paid plugin Overlord to send this graphic to After Effects as a shape layer. And here I am in After Effects and it's brought in our shape layer. The alternative way to get this logo as shape layers into After Effects is to copy your shape from Illustrator, add a solid layer in After Effects and press paste and it creates a mask. Then deselect any layers and choose the pen tool and click to create a shape layer. Drop this down so you can see the path. Drop down the solid layer with those masks. Drop down one of the masks and choose mask path, not the mask name. Press copy, click on the shape layer and paste and you have your first shape for that letter. And you can go through and do that for all the layers. You can then delete the layer with the masks and you have this shape layer, which can scale up infinitely and works with 3D extrusion inside of After Effects, which I'll be doing much later in this video. And I've already got a white solid as a background beneath it. You can then right click on the layer, choose 3D layer, drop down the geometry options and increase the extrusion depth, giving us some 3D depth to our logo. And then drop down material options and I'm going to up that specular shininess value with it selected, I can actually just go up to here and change that fill color. With our layer selected, I can press R, spin it around, and we have our 3D logo. Pretty cool, and you can imagine how you could animate this in After Effects already. 
This is obviously not using AI and you might have a logo, some text or a graphic you want to use already, but I just wanted to show how I got to this point of the project. And before I touch on any AI tools, I wanted to quickly show off a free plugin that enables you to add some lighting effects around the outside of your logo. So to do this, I'm gonna use the free plugin from Video Copilot called Sabre. So I'm gonna right click, press new, solid, call it Sabre. Jump back to Adobe Illustrator and with our logo selected, just copy that back into Adobe After Effects and press paste. I'm then gonna right click in the effects panel up here, choose Video Copilot and press Sabre. I can then drop down the customized core menu, choose layer masks, and it adds this glow around the outside of that logo. We can reduce the intensity. Scroll down the menu here, drop down render settings, scroll to the bottom where it says composition settings and choose transparency. And then with our layer selected, I can press M to bring up the masks, highlight all those mask layers, double click on one of the points and scale it up so that it matches the scale of our 3D logo. We can then make that Sabre layer 3D by pressing the toggle here. But as it's on the same position on the Z axis, we get a slight weird look to it. So we can press P on our Sabre layer to bring up the position values and just move it to minus one on the Z axis. And it's positioned ever so slightly in front of that 3D layer and looking pretty cool. You can then play around with a ton of settings within Sabre, choose one of their presets, reduce the start size, set some keyframes on the mask evolution. With the layer selected, press U to bring up the keyframes, move to the end of the timeline, change that mask evolution to one. And then when you play through the timeline, that animated stroke moves around the outside of the logo. And keep tweaking the settings till you arrive at something you're happy with. Now I'm gonna use AI to create an initial 3D scene for our composition. I've used Midjourney to create this image, but you could use any generative AI tool like Stable Diffusion, Leonardo.ai, and many others. I'm then using Zoe Depth, which runs on Hugging Face, and it's available for free, and this is a version by Sharik Farouk. And if you go to the tool and press Image to 3D, click and upload your image, tick Occlusion Edges and press Submit. And this takes just a couple of seconds to generate a 3D mesh. And you can press the button in the top right to download a GLB file. You can then import that file into the latest version of Adobe After Effects, drag it down to your timeline, press OK, press R and rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis. Change your view to two views, drag your mesh below your logo, scale it up and reposition it. Jump back to one view so you're in the active camera and play around with the position until you're happy. If you want to move your logo into the distance, you could click on your Sabre layer and parent that to your logo. So now when you move that 3D logo, the Sabre layer will move with it. You can then right click, press new and choose camera. I'm gonna go for a 50 mil camera this time and press okay. And then in your viewpoint, you can press C to go through the camera controls and you can zoom, pan and rotate around your 3D scene. And in my scene, I've set a camera move that zooms all the way towards my logo over three seconds. And if you want to add some consistent lighting to your scene, you can use a tool from Blockade Labs at blockadelabs.com. On the correct paid tier, you can actually create and download a HDR image. So using the text prompt, rocky cliffside with grass, sunset, evening, and choosing the style realism and pressing generate, I get this cool 360 image. And I can press download, choose HDR, and import that into After Effects. Then back inside Adobe After Effects, you can right click on the timeline and press new light and choose an environment light. Press OK. You can then go to the advanced 3D box here, choose render options and press fit to scene, which will change the area of the shadow box, which instantly adds shadows to our scene. And when you're ready to render, you can go in and increase the render quality settings here, which will slow down the render, but achieves a crisper finish. I can then grab our imported HDR image from Blockade Labs, drag that down to our composition, hide that layer, and then in the environment light, in the drop down here, we can choose the source. If you can't see it, you need to press the button here to reveal the correct panel. But dropping down the menu, we can then select our HDR image. Now our 3D environment and our logo are being affected by that HDR lighting. And we can go to the lighting settings and up the brightness. And you can rotate the light, which essentially rotates that HDR image and affects the lighting in your scene. Environment lights are quite processor heavy, so just disable it while you're working on other areas of your composition. If you wanted to just simply grade the 3D environment, for example, clicking on the GLB file, right clicking, choosing effect, you'll find that all the effects are actually grayed out. And a quick way around this is to create a new layer, a new solid. I'm gonna call it background copy. And if you go to the effects panel and search for calculations, double click and add that effect to your layer. You can then select your 3D background layer that you generated using Zoe Depth, increase the opacity of that layer. And if it does have some transparency on the layer, you can choose copy here as well. You can then right click on that layer, 
choose effects and you have access to all the normal effects. So you can tweak the colors using things like CC toner. And you can drop that layer just above that 3D composition that it's duplicating. Plus, of course, you could add a load more color grading effects, add some distortion effects, use the simulation shatter effect, whatever it is you want to do. I'm simply going to use it to add a little bit of color grading with that CC toner effect and then add a blur using Gaussian blur so that as we get closer, the background's blurred out quite a lot by this point. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the core animation here. So for the next stage, I'm actually going to duplicate my Yoke's logo and hide one of those. We're going to use that as a mat later on. And then with this original one, I'm going to press T to bring up opacity and set some keyframes. So it's going to start off invisible, fade up to around 50% and then at the very end, fade out to zero again. And then in the project window, I'm going to click on my main composition and press Command D or Control D to duplicate that. Give it a new name. I'm then going to open that composition. And then in my Zoe Depth files here, I've actually imported a football stadium 3D file, which I generated using Zoe Depth based on an image I generated using Midjourney. So with that file selected, I can go down to my composition, click on the GLB file for this current scene, and then press Option Command forward slash to swap those elements out. Alternatively, you can click on the file, hold down Option or Alt, and drag it down on top of the other layer to swap the files over. And we now have the logo animated in front of a football stadium. I've tweaked the keyframes on the football stadium composition so they start just before three seconds and end at six seconds as it zooms into that logo. I can then jump back to that rocky background, click hold on my football stadium composition and drag that down, positioning it above the 3D rocky background. And then over to the track mat column, I can click down and choose that duplicated Yikes logo. And then as we play through, we move into the logo and transition through to the next scene and we could build on it to create other 3D scenes duplicating that main composition. And you could combine some of the earlier AI animations we generated in the first half of this animation, compositing them using track mats, masks, and different blending modes. All right, so interestingly, whilst making this video, late yesterday, OpenAI just released their Sora video generation preview, and it looks ridiculous, letting you create very, very, very realistic generations from a text prompt of a length up to one minute. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this evolves as it's released to the public later on in the year. Whether that's weeks, months, I'm not sure, but it looks very cool, very exciting, and it's gonna be interesting to see how we can make use of that to create stunning video generations and how it's gonna impact video and animation production across the world. Um, yeah, watch this space. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned some new processes both in Adobe After Effects and some of these AI tools. Um, of course, all of these ideas you could develop much further and make something even more premium, but um, hopefully it's been useful. As always, please press like, subscribe, leave any comments, and head over to aianimation.com to see what's going on there and check out any AI software on the new software directory there as well. All right, thank you. Cheers. <laughs>